Yeah, 2016 must have been an extraordinary year for you. Um, the film has won the Palm d'Or, it got standing ovation, you won uh, Best Actor in the British Independent Film Awards and it's currently up for Best Film at the BAFTAs along with a whole host of other awards. Did you ever think your first major film would attract such attention and achieve such critical acclaim? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, no, it, it was, I mean, we started, um, uh, we shot the film in 2015 uh, in Biker in Newcastle, which incidentally was where I was born. Um, uh, it, it took six weeks, uh, six or seven weeks to shoot. Um, I got the part, uh, I, 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 I did some plays up in Edinburgh and the producer put me in touch with Ken Loach and I did some castings, I did three castings with different actresses and I was amazed that I got the part, uh, but no, sh shooting the film up in uh, in Newcastle, um, it, it 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 was a million of miles from my thoughts. I just didn't want to ruin Ken Loach's career, and that, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, it got the Palm Door at Cannes. Uh, it 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 basically uh, the fair. We took the film to Cannes. It was premiered there, and on the Thursday we went out for dinner and the PR guy came in and he said something really weird's happened. And he says, I've just been to four screenings that they did for the press and people are in tears. And me, naturally being a comedian, thought, well, it's that bad. <laughs> and, uh, and it went on from there. It won the Palm d'Or. It's had numerous awards all over the place. Uh, everywhere we've shown it, yep. in Europe, it's had the same reaction uh, It come at it, 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 the film festivals. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's a powerful... It seems to have um, touched the nerve, you know, yeah. at the right time. And you've mentioned, and you know, we've talked about you being a comedian, and you've shown how good a comedian you are here now already. <laughs> um, and while there are some fleeting moments of comedy in the film at particular points, um, Ken Loach is obviously not known for doing comedy. And I just wondered, what do you think he saw in you um, to portray this character in his what in in it, in what is quite a political and brutal drama? I think um, one of Ken Loach's uh, big uh, pluses and big qualities is he's, if, if you look at all his films, um, he's very good at casting the right people in the right <laughs> roles. No, and, and I don't mean that as blowing my own trumpet. I mean that he saw something in me and uh, Haley when we were auditioning. And what he said afterwards was that um, he, he was looking for an honesty and a truth. Um, maybe I can give you a little bit of background on how Ken works. Um, he doesn't give you the full script. Uh, you don't get a full script. You get a couple of pages each day. And he also shoots in chronological order, which you don't get in films. Uh, and why that happens is it, it basically you live, you, you live the role of the character. And, and I remember the first day Ken said to me on set, he said, um, all you and Haley have to do is listen to each other. And if you listen to each other, you'll find the truth. And if you find the truth, you'll find the, um, the honesty and that will show on screen. There's no music in this film, which is quite unusual for a film because music can manipulate your emotions. Um, and Ken wanted it to be stark, he wanted it to be real. And when I said about him casting the right people, he just seems to find people that, that you know, if you look through all his films, that they they are the right people for that part. So I think that's his big and I mean his I, big plus. I think it'll be interesting <coughs> to see how the audience reacts tonight. But I I felt myself at certain points that there are certain scenes where I could physically feel a kind of a reaction to to what I was seeing, and I could feel my anger rise up inside me. And I just wondered, kind of, you talked a bit about some of the techniques Ken Loach um, deploys in kind mm -hmm. of that visceral, sort of brutal presentation. How, how did he support you in being able to sort of... Well, how he shoots is he doesn't... Like, like you know, I've done a, a little bit of time, this is the first feature film I've done, but um, Ken shoots still on film and he basically has very small crew. All the most of the crew are left at the, uh, at the base and when you're doing a scene, it's only the camera, you, Ken, and the sound and the people you're doing the scene with. And he has the camera in the corner of the room because... Ken's belief is that the camera should be another character. The camera should be absor observing what's happening. And, and, and he never tells you what lens he's got on. 
So, so it's never intrusive. There's never a camera in your face. There was times when I forgot I was making the film. Yeah. And, and, we were, and because Hayley, I mean, you'll see Hayley Squires in the film. She's been nominated for, um, she's won two awards. She's been nominated for Best Actress in the BAFTAs, the, uh, Best Supporting Actress. And you'll see why every moment she was on the ball. And when you're acting against somebody who's given you lots, it, it, it makes it much easier. And, and, you know, Kennel basically, he stands... A lot of directors stand looking in the monitor because it's all done on digital and they're looking for the shot there and then. Ken's just standing watching what's happening in the room. And I think um, that's why all his films feel real. Yeah. You, you, you walk into a, you're watching a scene in a Ken Loach movie and you think you've just opened the door and you've walked into this job centre and there's a Barney going on. It never feels like you. Same with Paul Lafferty who wrote the script. Um, Paul is a great writer. I think you should never watch a film and think somebody wrote those words. Mm -hmm. And did you? T how did you prepare for the role? I mean, you said that you were just given the bits of the script at a time. Did you speak to people who had experience? Well, of well, I mean, you know, it, it was a shock to me. I mean, like, you know, um, um, Haley met um, a single mum who was living in a in a in a sort of like in a in a one roomed. Um, 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 shelter for, 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 for a single mum. She had two kids and Hayley talked to her. Ken and Paul did um, lots of research in this, spoke to lots of people who worked for the Department of Works and Pensions who had left because they couldn't do any more sanctions on people that, um, the people who, who are in the food bank or people who really work in the food bank. Um, hey, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the first day, uh, the first week I went into production, um, Ken gave me the 52-page form for um, income and support. He said, fill that in. And uh, <coughs> it was insane. Um, um, so I don't know what it must be like for somebody who's mm. ill or has any sort of, you know, problem to think, if I fill this wrong, mm -hmm. I'm going to be sort of left high yep. and dry. So, yeah, I mean, Ken, Ken's very much a case of um, he, 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 he wants you... Like, like, like he doesn't want you and the actress to look at page 26 of a script and go, oh, this is the big scene here. We'll play it like this. He wants it to be real. He wants it to be in the moment. And for an actor, that's f an amazing thing to be able to do, you know? Yeah. So the film itself focuses on the issue of sanctions and I think really lays bare the reality of trying to navigate through what is a very complex um, and confusing benefit system. And this is a topic which is usually confined to the social pages of The Guardian. You don't really hear a lot about it in the mainstream press. So what do you think, uh, and yet this film has kind of been a box office success, mm. so what do you think has made people go and see the film and why do you think audiences have reacted so well? Well, you know, I mean, I think the, the great thing about the awards that it's picked up is it keeps it in the public eye. That's the great thing about winning the awards. It keeps it, 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 it doesn't make, I think it was the right time. I think the two characters, I don't know if anybody's seen the film yet, but if you've seen it for the first time, the two characters are, are ordinary. I mean, you know, you know, um, Dan could be your father, he could be your uncle, Katie could be your sister. And for a long time, there's been a narrative played out that um, people who, I mean, years ago, it used to be called Social Security. And I wish, in a way, you know, that means that if there's a problem, you get some help. And now they've changed it to the American terminology of benefit and welfare, which plays in the hands of it sounds like it's a handout. And I think for years, um, people who have needed that have been, um, there's been this narrative played out that, you know, if you don't, Ken always says, you know, that poverty, is you, you know, they say poverty is your own fault. They want to, if you haven't tried hard enough, then it's your fault. Because if it's the state's fault, they have to do something about it. And I think that <clears throat> it shows, this film shows ordinary people, you know. It, 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 an old guy came up to me in a, um, in a shop after it was released. He was about 86 or something, an old guy. And he goes, you're, you're that guy out that film, aren't you? And I went, yeah. And he goes, tell Ken Loach when you see him, he's given a voice back to the working class who haven't been listened to in this country for 40 years. And I think, you know, that says it all, really, you know. So, um just picking up on that, do you think Daniel and Katie's stories will make people think differently um, about those who find themselves at the sharp end of poverty? Or is this a film that is just simply preaching to the choir? Well, you don't want to do that. I mean, I, 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 like, the thing is, um, <clears throat> I think, you know, I didn't know about sanctions. Um, and they were put in place because um, it was 
the the idea is that it's to force people back to work. That it's better to work than be on benefits. I think everybody would agree that's true. I mean, just if you're genius, I think the people who are on benefits would go, yeah, if you could give me a job that isn't zero as contracts. Um, and, and I think that, you know, people do know it's going on. The government know it's going on because they're the ones who implement the system. Um, you know, people are being sanctioned for in insane reasons for being late. A guy um, 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 had a heart attack in the, in the, in the, in the went to hospital and he got sanctioned. And, and, and these are stories that, you know, have been told and are in the press. You can check them up. And, 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 and I think what it is, it's a, it shocked me because it's a system that's supposed to be there to help people when they need it. And what it's doing is it's, it, it's, it's making it so difficult, bureaucracy, so that people give up. And people just go, I can't go through this anymore. And, you know, people told us that, you know, people from the uh, work and pensions told us that there was, um, that they had quotas, mm -hmm. that they had to do so many sanctions mm -hmm. or they would get into trouble, mm -hmm. you know, and Ken and Paul saw the paperwork for it. And, and I think, you know, the government do know this is going on and... and, and but it is going to take sort of a public reaction against that to be able well, to well, give well, a mandate. Well, we're up against a lot because you're trying to turn public's perception. It's like what they're doing with the National Health Service, you know, running it down. You run the National Health Service down, you show that, because you have to turn public opinion, so, so, this, so, so, so you run it down, you make, you're going to open seven days a week. Okay, where's the money coming from? The system fails, and then it's right to go, well, you see, it doesn't work. And everybody goes, yeah, oh, yeah, it doesn't work. And I think that's what's happened with, with benefits. It's demonised people who are on the benefit system. And I don't know anybody who wants a cushy, easy life would want to take their kids to a food bank at the end of the week mm -hmm. to get food. I mean, you know, it's it's about... There has to be a change in our attitude. There's nothing wrong with getting on in life, I don't think, and earning money, but you, but it's your moral duty, I think, to turn and help people and to have some sort of compassion, you know? So um, I just want to pick up the point you made about sort of the role of the media in... Um, kind of pitting working class people against one another, I guess yeah. the deserving versus the undeserving poor. And Daniel and Katie are sympathetic characters, and like you say, you can identify and empathise with their situations. But do you think there is a slight risk that that reinforces the stereotype of the deserving poor? I hate that term, deserving poor. I mean, how can you be, you know, one poor person is more deserving than the other? I think that's another thing that's gone, you know, I mean, like... like I mean, there's lots of reasons why people are in trouble. There's lots of reasons. There's mental health issues. There's, there's education. There's lack of jobs. There's um, lack of motivation. Kids bringing brought up in a family that have, you know, substance abuse. I mean, th those are all the reasons why there's poverty. And those are the re things we should be tackling um, if you want to, y y y like, 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 you know, get a... To, to, to me, a caring society. And it doesn't, yeah, if somebody's cheating the system, if somebody's cheating the system, then they should be prosecuted. But, you know, if you look at statistics, there's less than 1% benefit fraud. And people think it's 10, 15%, you know? And I think that's, that's the thing that, 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 for instance, you know, I think it's like, you know, benefit street. I mean, that's, you know, that sort of, poverty porn that people want to watch on the TV where they give a couple of people who have an alcohol problem, they give them cans of lager and then let them go off and shoplift. And they go, oh yeah, well I shoplift loads of stuff. And then people sit and go, I'm not going to work my arse off while they're doing that, you know? And this is all that we have to change. You're, you're right, we have to change. And this film is one of the ways. I think as an artist, all you can do is make something that you found and you have to present it to the audience, then they have to make their yeah. mind up, you know? I mean, we're sitting here while, well, I think he's uh, now become president of the United States, and he too's talked about um, standing up for the forgotten man. <laughs> in a world, <laughs> in a world. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never, I've never had a joke as funny as that. <laughs> In a world that is becoming more, more polarised in terms of politics and a public that's ever more disillusioned with politics, do you see a role for films and broader culture to help bridge divides and act, act as catalysts for change? Well, well, it has to. I mean, the one thing I love about film, it, 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 it has the power 
to entertain, to make you cry, to make you laugh, to make you angry, to make you more compassionate. And, and you know, those are the things that make us human. And if we turn away, like, you know, there's social media, there's, there's, you know, there's a reason for social media and there's a time and place. But we're all, this is why I hate this, all this nationalism, you know, that Trump's saying, you know, we're going to make America great. What, what, what does that mean? Make America great. We're going to get the country back when Brexit. I don't know what that means. We, we, we should be coming together. Uh, that, uh, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, like Trump will just go, we're going to make America great. Yeah! What about the poor? We'll make them great as well. Uh, I mean, he, he's just saying slogans. He doesn't know what to do. But, it, but, but he's a billionaire. In, at the end of the day, he's still going to be a billionaire. I mean, like, like, like I posted on Facebook, I posted two speeches. One, Abraham Lincoln and one Donald Trump from the transcript of what he said about that woman in the bus, you know? About, oh, you can kiss them, you can kiss them, they're up for it and all this. And, he, and when you put those two speeches together and think that each one of them has been the President of the United States. And I think people voted for Donald Trump because they wanted change. Mm -hmm. People are angry. Mm -hmm. And Ken said to me, all you and Haley have to do is listen to each other mm -hmm. and you'll find the truth. And I think that's the key. We don't listen to each other. Mm -hmm. We pretend that we all listen to each other, and we don't. If we started listening to each other and realise why people are angry, mm -hmm. why people feel as though they're left behind, you know, Theresa May's now saying, oh, you know, we're going to make sure that globalisation works for everybody. You know, you know, Ken Loach said a great thing. He was in an interview, and one of the interviewers said, um, you know, that the con compassionate conservatism and Ken says it's a bit like a, um, it's a bit like a, a unicorn. We've all heard about it, but nobody's actually seen it. So, you, do you believe in Theresa May's vision of I a shared believe, society? I believe. I, see, see, I don't think it cares what 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 political stance you've got. I don't care if you you know liberal or or Labour or conservatism. It's about being a human being. It's about doing the right thing. And you know, for years, there's been this push you have to get on that's what life's about it's about getting on making your way and it's up to every individual person to do that but we all don't start on a level playing field if we all start on a level playing field and that would be okay but we don't and you know it, 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 it doesn't it, it doesn't make sense to me it's like donald trump's gonna um repeal obamacare i mean what F affordable health care for the poor. No, 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 we're not running that. And I think that's because the Americans, it, it, it smells of socialism. <laughs> and, they, and they hate that because they think it's communism. And, and, and so, you know, to me, it's not Tory or thing. It, it's about, I wish you could say it, the people say to me, would you not like to show Theresa May this film? She wouldn't watch it because she knows what's going on with the health system. Ian Duncan Smith, why show him it? Because he knows about it. You know, it, he, he knows it's happening. But the film has become political, hasn't yeah, it? And, and Ken Loach, you know, you see him at, um, you know, Jeremy Corbyn's um, rallies. You yourself have spoken at the Labour Party conference. Well, are you, are you entering politics? No. <laughs> yes. Tonight, I'm going to... Is there anything you'd like to announce? <laughs> yes. Yes, it's a good thing you said There's that. There's a couple of seats going. No, no, you see, the thing is, I was never politically sort of like... I, I was always politically aware, but I was never... Like I'm, I'm not militant, or I'm not sort of a protester, or anything like that, or an activist. But, but I, I think what it is is that that, that you know, um, the politics comes from the story. It comes from the film. It, it's not about let's make something that is a political statement. It, 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 it comes from, I believe, the truth that that all these things that happened to Katie and to Dan happened in real life, happened to people that, that they interviewed, that people who... So, you know, politics is in our life. Like, like I know loads of people go, I can't be... And I can't, you know... I mean, most of the time, you just go... <laughs> when, when they talk, you just go, you're just saying anything. 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 Uh, we're going to give the National Health Service um, billions of pounds when we go out of Europe. Oh, we're brilliant. So we're going to get that now. No. Well, now we just put it on the bus. 
you know, of course we didn't mean it, you know. In, 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 and I think what's happened now is people are angry about it. That's going, we, we, so Donald Trump comes along and he says all the things that they want to hear. So they go, yeah, you know. And, now, and I think Theresa May is now trying to go, oh, shit. Because, because, no, because they will not change. They will not change politicians. I'm 60 years of age. They will not change unless they're forced to change. So do you think this film, and is it Ken Loach's intention, that it starts some kind of movement for change? I think it think, has already. Think I think it, it has, has already. already. I think it has already. I so think what's next? Spider-Man. <laughs> That's where I'm going to be next. <laughs> <laughs> I th sorry, it's a comic. I can't help it. Um, um, I think that 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 that, 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 that like, like I said before, all this, all these awards. People go, oh, "Isn't it great that you won this award?" And I go, "Yeah, it's great," but it gives the it gives the film weight. I think when they heard about this film, they thought that's one of Ken Loach's lefty rubbish. It'll be gone, but it's not. And it, and, and it you know, it's been. And, you know, it's been sort of, you know, it's on Question Time, it's on, on, on Newsnight, it's on, you know, the film. Um, it, 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 it has this power to make people go, no, we don't want this. And that's, and that's how you get changed. You don't get changed by, by voting in Donald Trump. You get changed by people doing it themselves and going, we are not having this. Mm -hmm. And you can see that now Theresa May's thinking, something's changing here. Because I've seen what's happening, you know. So I better try and get on the bandwagon, but I'll just be very vague about it, and I'll say, globalisation has to work for everybody. So how do you think those living in communities that have been left behind, um, how how can they get their stories out? There? How can um, they get the attention that a film like this does? Because they're not going to have Ken Loach coming around next week. Well, well so. I think they have to. They have to do. I mean, the great thing about E E One, the, um, the people who distributed this film. When it has its theatre release and it stopped having its theatre release, they said to Ken, we are going to license it to community venues. Now, this is unheard of, you know what I mean? And they've been... I mean, when in the film... Before the film was released, they did free um, screenings all over the country in different Odeons, um, uh, where through the unions and, you, you know, and, they get, and all over. There's about 360 community centres who've got this film that are going to be shown in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And so that keeps it alive, yep. you know? That keeps it alive. That keeps it in the public eye. It keeps people thinking about it. And, you know, you have to make your own mind up about the film, you know? You have to sit and examine. I think each person has to examine your own conscience mm -hmm. and say, do I think that what's happening with our social security, because I'm not going to call it benefit or, 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 or welfare because that's not what it is. It's social security. I mean, most of us are probably about two or three paychecks away from needing help, if we were honest. And so I think, you know, we've just got to, you've got to examine each person's conscience and go, do I believe this? And if I do, am I going to do something about it? It's, it's very hard to talk about it because you haven't seen the yeah. film, so I have to, yeah. you know. Have so to. as we said, you're off to the Barbican in a moment. Um, are we going to see you in any more films anytime soon? You know what I'd Apart really would love? man I'd love to be a Bond villain. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how scary a Geordie Bond villain would be? James Bond comes in and I'm just sitting there. <laughs> in an abandoned mine. <laughs> and he comes in and I've got loads of pit ponies behind us. And I've just got to whip it in my... I've got to whip it on my knee. And, I go and, and I've got a bottle of brown ale on the counter. <laughs> and just to show I'm sophisticated, I've got a slice of coal in the top. <laughs> and knock your block off, Mr Bond. Um, yeah, I've got a few things that I can't talk about because I've had to sign little things. But yeah, I've got a few things oh, that are coming off. And I'm doing a, a stand-up show here in York at... Um, I'll tell you where. On the, the Barbican, isn't it? Yes, tonight, but yeah. I'm doing my tour. All oh, right, OK. I'm, I'm doing my tour. I'll just plug it. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> You'll recognise these glasses because they're the same ones I wore in the film. So the memorabilia. Um, <laughs> you I'm sell them on eBay. Yeah, I'll tell you where I am. Hang on. It's exciting, isn't it? Um, okay. Hang on. <laughs> it's here somewhere. The Crescent Community Hall. Do you know where that is? Yeah, the, the, the Crescent Community Hall in York. Um, 
Yeah, Crescent. I'm doing that on the Sunday, the 18th of June, my tour. So put that in your diary. I want to see everyone here. 